So we're going to join an F2 belt with a thermofix joint. That's a skived overlap splice. You can refer to the joining data sheet on our website. The first page of the joining data sheet shows the information about the skive on the belt. The skive should be between 25 and 35 millimeters long, uh, feathered down to the edges, and all of the layers of the belt should show up parallel to the cutting edge. The second page of the joining data sheet starts with a diagram and explanation of how and where to apply the fix-all adhesive, which is the adhesive that's going to be used to join this belt. First step, it says to cut away the extreme outer layer of the rubber tip of the belt. That's this end here. You would either want to, if there's any rubber showing here on your sky, you either want to trim that off, or if you can adjust the zero point of your skiver, you just raise the skiver slightly so that you don't expose that bottom layer of rubber. The reason is that we're going to use only Fix-All to join the belt, and Fix-All sticks nylon, but it won't stick rubber, so we don't want any rubber showing at the end of the skive. So ideally, the skive is feathered at the end of the edge of the belt, and all the layers are parallel to the cut edge of the belt. It's important that the skive surfaces on the ends of the belt are clean, so you may need to brush any debris from the skiving process that remains in the belt off of the belt. A regular wire brass brush does a good job of that, and you can see the dust here that's come out of the belt. In addition, you want to avoid handling this area or getting it greasy, but if it becomes soiled, you can clean the ends of the belt with a solvent and a clean shop towel. You should use nothing stronger than denatured alcohol is probably the best thing to use. That'll clean up any remaining soiling on the skive. Important to remember that you need to let the ends of the belt dry completely now so that all the solvents evaporated before we go on to the next step of applying the adhesives. The next step is going to be to apply a match line to the belt. In order to put a match line on, we want to line up the layers of the belt so that the one end corresponds exactly with the opposite end of the belt and put a mark. And then for the second mark, we want to lay the belt over on itself, make sure that the belt is straight and up to our first match mark, and then we can put our second mark down. So the mark should allow us, after we glue the belt, when we put the tip end of the belt down to the match marks, we'll have a belt that's straight and a belt where all the layers match one another exactly. Fix-All is the adhesive we're going to use because this belt is all nylon. When you open the Fix-All bottle, there's actually a brush built into the cap. You can use this brush to apply the Fix-All. Uh, over the course of using an entire bottle of Fix-All, you may get to the point where this brush is, is pretty well worn out. A good substitute is just an acid brush, which you can purchase from any industrial supply. Normally the brushes look like this when you get them out of the box and what we do is trim off half of the bristles and that just leaves you a shorter, stiffer bristle that makes it a lot easier to accurately apply and especially to rub in the Fix-All into the traction layer of the belt. So to apply the Fix-All, we'll want to start on the first layer of the belt. The diagram on the joining data sheet shows that on each end of the belt you want to apply the Fix-All across the traction layer of the belt, which is the middle the middle layer of the belt, the hard extruded nylon, all the way down to the tip end of the belt, including this fabric. On the opposite end of the belt, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to apply the Fix-All to the traction layer and on down to the tip of the belt and cover that fabric. And then you can see when we join the belt together, you'll have Fix-All on this fabric, which will take care of this bond. You'll have Fix-All on this layer which will take care of this bond, and on the traction layer, you'll have the fix-all on both. So the first fix-all. When you remove the brush from the bottle, there's really a lot of adhesive there on the brush. So the first thing probably to do is brush a little bit away back into the bottle so that you don't have too much. The instructions say to evenly and thinly coat the traction layer which is what I've done here, and also the fabric layer on the end of the belt. 
The question is, how much fix-all should you use? The joining data sheet only has two, two words in all caps on this instruction, and they are evenly and thinly. And so the idea is that you don't want to take the brush out loaded with fix-all and put way too much on there. A belt this size, this belt's four inches wide, you really need to brush a good part of the fix-all out, out of the brush so that you don't have too much on the belt. The next step is you want to rub the fix-all in on the traction layer, that's the middle layer only, and you want to rub it in probably about one minute for every two inches of belt width. So I'm going to rub this in for a good one minute to two minutes. Really rubbing it in. And what you're doing is you're breaking down that hard nylon layer, getting the fix-all to penetrate into it and make a really good bond. As you rub this into the traction layer, you'll feel it and you can begin to see it leaves swirl marks and it begins to feel more like uh, a pancake syrup or some sort of a, a heavier viscosity like that as opposed to how uh, liquid it was at the beginning. So now I've rubbed that in well and now I'll go to the second side of the belt. Again, we'll dip into the bottle, brush about half of it out, and then evenly and thinly across the traction layer and across the bottom fabric layer. You can always go back for a little bit more, but it's, it's difficult to take any off. And so again, I always suggest you really brush the excess out of that brush before you put it on the belt. So you can see we have the whole fabric covered and the traction layer covered. And now again, I'm gonna rub it in on that middle layer, the traction layer. Fix-all is just resorcinol, alcohol, and water. And resorcinol is actually uh, molecularly very much like the nylon, just in a liquid form. So actually, this is a solvent bond. What the fix-all is doing is actually dissolving the nylon and, and making a chemical weld with the heat and, the pr and pressure that we're going to apply next. So again, I'm rubbing this in at least a full minute probably closer to a minute and a half. Again, you'll feel it become, start to become very sticky, and that's what you want. Now you may wonder why we're only applying it to the traction layer and the bottom fabric. That's because the, bottom, the fabric, you can see, really soaks up the fix-all, and if we put it on both fabrics on both sides, there would really be too much fix-all in the joint, and too much fix-all causes a stiff or brittle joint that's likely to fail prematurely. So we're just putting on the traction layer and one fabric on each end of the belt. And again, you can see when we go to put the belt together, this fabric is coated, so just one side, and this fabric is coated over here, just one side. So the whole sky is covered, but we just haven't duplicated the glue on the fabric layers at each end of the belt. Now we need to allow the fix-all to air dry for one to two minutes before we press the belt. So we're using the Habisit PT300 press for this splice. We're going to open the press and we want to put the first end of the belt into the press with the match line showing up. So you want to place the splice in the middle of the press both from side to side and from end to end. So just as much in the middle as you can make it. In addition, we're putting side pieces of scrap material, the same F2 material as the belt. It's important that it's always the exact same material. And we're putting that on either side of the belt which will just help maintain the straightness of the belt and also will keep any excess material from squeezing out the sides of the belt and causing the edges of the belt to be thinner. So we've got the first side fastened down. So 
so that everything's held in place. Now we want to bring the other end of the belt around and carefully position it, overlapping the belt right up to our match marks. It's always good to start a little bit high and work back towards your match marks. If you go the other way, you may risk rolling that bottom flap up under the belt. So start a little bit high and then just slowly move the belt down until you can see your match mark. There it is, and there it is. Now we'll just touch that down, see that we're exactly up against the match marks. Go ahead and press the belt down. Since the fix-all has air dried for one to two minutes, it's really quite sticky and actually that belt is pretty firmly attached right now, although obviously not yet its full strength. Now we'll put the second hold down bar in place. We'll just ensure that the belt doesn't move during the pressing process. These thumb screws just need to be finger tight. Then we'll close the press. The PT300 press instructions call for using a torque wrench to tighten the press. 17 newtons per millimeter maximum. So we have the torque wrench set to 17. And we just tighten it down until it clicks. Now the belt needs to press for minimum of 10 minutes, but that 10 minutes doesn't start counting until the press has reached temperature. There is a pilot light on the front of the bottom of the press, which will illuminate when the press is plugged in. And once the press reaches temperature, the light will begin to cycle on and off. And it's at that time that you begin the 10 minute countdown. Our light is still on on the press, but the thermostat light has gone out. That means that the press has now reached 120 degrees centigrade. So we want to set our timer for 10 minutes. And start the timer. Now you may wonder about how carefully you need, careful you need to be with this. The main thing is to keep in mind that the belt has to be cooked for at least a minimum of 10 minutes with the press at temperature. If it goes a few minutes over, that's not going to be any problem. In fact, up to twice the recommended time won't harm the belt at all. And again, if you're in a normal room temperature environment it, and you don't have time to sit and watch the press warm up, you can just add 15 minutes to the recommended cook time and that 15 minutes will allow enough time for the press to reach temperature and you'll be sure that you've cooked the belt past the minimum amount of time. Okay, so now our timer has clicked down to zero so we can turn it off and remove the belt from the press. Alternatively, you could unplug the press and let the belt cool down in the press, and that's a good practice, especially for demanding applications, but it may be that you need to go ahead and start the next belt in the press, so it's not necessary to cool the belt under pressure. The only thing to keep in mind is you shouldn't apply any tension to the belt if you were installing it on a machine until the belt is completely cooled back to room temperature. So to remove the belt from the press, we'll undo the bolt. Open the press. Remember these surfaces are very hot. So careful not to touch them. We'll undo the hold down bars. And we can remove our belt from the press. The side pieces will normally come off fairly easily. Okay, when the belt's removed from the press, uh, the quality checks that you can do are just to make sure that the belt stayed aligned right up to the match marks where you placed it. If you applied a correct amount of fix-all, at most you should have just a little bit squeezing out the edge. You can feel it here, just the least little bit. But if you see any puddling of, of a dark color at either end of the sky, that would be excess fi fix-all running out of the splice, and that would be an indication that you used way too much. So if you use the right amount, 
You can see that the belt's completely sealed on the edges. There's just a little bit easing out the edges of the splice, and that can be uh, buffed off with a sanding wheel. And of course, the belt should be straight. <laughs>